My name's Mark Whitby from the um, Minister's Network here in the city and um, I've led the network for around about 20 years. I think it's around about that and, you know, the, uh, recently I, um, I stepped down from the leadership of my own local church feeling like the Lord was speaking to me about pastoring the city, you know, really spending more energy on, on Frankston and I've just become singularly focused on, on really seeing Frankston doing all it's called to do and I know that's the call of the church in the city anyway but you know um, one of the promises that God gave me was out of Isaiah 58 and there's this powerful scripture we all know Isaiah 58 speaks about true fasting and um, it talks about uh, caring for the disadvantaged and the Lord always spoke to me about verse uh, sorry verse 6 through to verse verse 11 and really talks about those that care for the needs of the distressed and care for the needs of the disadvantaged will become like a well-watered garden. God will always look after them. But he always told me to stop at verse 11. But I had this, this encounter with God a while back. And in that encounter, he took me to the verse 12. And he said, because you've been faithful to do these things, verse 12 becomes your inheritance. And verse 12 says, those from among you will be restorers of the streets in which to dwell which is such a powerful, powerful scripture, you know, but it's also a powerful truth for any city. And um, I'm so passionate about that. I'm, you know, many of you know the stuff that we at City Life have done over the years, caring for the disadvantaged, feeding people. We're still doing that every morning, of course. And Wendy Schotter, who's here somewhere, I don't know where she is, oh, right there. Wendy's our manager down at the, we, we run a, a breakfast every morning down at, Fra down at the Frankston TAFE. And we're feeding, you know, 40 to 45 people every day. And that, that's just a great ministry. But it's, you know, we've got around about 65 volunteers that work in there, which many of them come from the church, but other people come from other places. And, but we're also doing a lot of other things. We do the Christmas lunch. We obviously do the big event down at Easter. But I, I really feel like as a, ch as a church in the city, God's calling us to engage on another level. A couple of years ago, I was over in London, and um, Sue and I were, my wife and I, we were staying in a place called, where was it, Sue, down? I forgot the name of that little town. Do you remember? doesn't really matter, but it was actually not London, but it was out of London. And, and in the middle of the shopping centre, there was these people walking around with um, yellow vests on with street past or something like that written on their backs. And I remember saying to Sue, Frankston needs that, you know, that's something we need, you know, I was seeing these people wander around talking to people and I thought, what a, what a great idea and um, recently I just felt God start to speak to me in prayer, I was praying one day and he said, Mark, I want you to now do that, I want you to do that in Frankston and, um, and to be honest, I didn't know where to start but the Lord told me to ring an old friend of mine, Jim Jung and Jim is the former pastor of Peninsula City now, he's a full-time chaplain for the um, Victoria Police. Jim's doing a great job there. He's actually founded that. Comes out of Frankston, which is great. And I think he's got 60 full-time uh, full chaplains now. Is, is that right? <coughs> Jacob, am I saying the right? Something that all the volunteers, but 60 people working with the Victoria Police. It's such a, a great thing that he's doing. And anyway, I met with Jim the, the day that God spoke to me. And, and Jim actually sent me the... the, the phone number of a guy called Randall Bond. And now I'd met Randall previously. Randall's down here. I'm going to introduce him to you in a moment. But Randall, um, I, I rang him up and said, can I have a coffee with you? And he started to tell me what he'd done in Melbourne. And I didn't even know about this. I didn't know it existed here in Melbourne. But uh, he's told me about what's called Yarra Pastors. They're doing the same kind of thing, you know. And so it became a real connection. But in that conversation with Randall, he actually told me about this conference called Reclaiming the Streets, which is, we've got some posters up here for, and we're going to give them out a little later. But uh, in that conversation I had with Randall, he actually told me about Eustace and Sharon and said, hey, they're going to be in, they're going to be in Melbourne in a couple of weeks' time. How about I ring them, or whatever you did, and can I see if they'd be willing to come down and speak at a breakfast? So I just saw a divine connection in that whole thing, you know. And so I, I just felt God say to me, go and speak to a bunch of ministers. So I've, I've visited a bunch of senior guys in the city and I think I've got a bit of a green light from most of them saying, this is God. We feel God's on that. And, and I, I do believe it's about the trust that you have in me as a, 
as a, as a guy, but because, you know, we, I've worked in a city for a long time, but I think there's a, a sense of that. Anyway, I've connected with a friend of mine called John Clement. Now, John's around. Where is John? John is a retired medical doctor, and John's actually helped us in city life over the years with medical stuff. We do, we've done a lot of medical type things, and we have um, had a nursing service that would come in every day, homeless nursing service. John helped us to, to get that working. But John actually worked for the World Health Organization. And interestingly, we were actually talk we caught up with John to talk to him about something we do over in Thailand. And in the conversation, we started to talk about what God had spoken to me about. And, and, and John said to me, did you know I've actually retrained as a chaplain? And I, which I didn't actually fully know. And so John's really, does, you know, he's got such a desire to help people in, in a kind of a compassion, mercy way. And, and so John is helping me. We, when I say helping me, we're not doing anything at the minute, but we feel like God's on this. We feel like the next season is to launch something. Now, I've got a, a sheet of paper that's going to be out on the table as you leave today, and it's actually just a, an expression of interest. And if you've got an interest in what you hear today, the stuff you hear about, put your name and your, and your email address, perhaps your phone number on that, and, and we'll try and develop a bit of a strategy going forward. That's kind of our... The vision right now, it's, it's very small, but I just kind of believe that God's in this. Finally, just before I invite uh, these guys up, I just, I was really challenged, you know. One of, the, one of the challenges out of scripture, out of, and we all know this so well, out of, out of Ephesians chapter 4 verse, verse 12, it talks about the fivefold ministry gifts and you know, I'm sure we all have different understandings of that, but one of the roles of the fivefold is to equip the saints for works of service, you know. And, and the reality is, guys, it's pretty hard to equip people for an hour and a half a week, you know. We, we, we need to kind of equip them beyond that, you know. And I'm so passionate to get the church equipped in a community that's beyond a meeting room, if that makes sense, you know. And like, it's great to do stuff on Sunday and we all do it so well. I mean, this is probably one of the premier churches in Frankston here at Gateway and they do such a, an amazing job. And, but it doesn't matter how amazing this is on Sunday, it's really what happens outside of here. I'm not having a go, Rick, please don't see it as that. But, <laughs> but, but the reality is, guys, God's called us to be Christians in every part of our life and I see this as an opportunity to start to be that and start to share who we are and I'm very passionate about that. We've recently started Street uh, Peace and uh, where are you mate? Yeah, did you, I don't, we haven't really got time for you to share but I just want to say Jaleel's running that down in the city and already he's contacted a group of kids and it's just amazing what's happening with that and so pleased about that. So that's kind of operating under us as well. And so that's kind of exciting. We're already reaching some of the kids in the city. I actually had a meeting this week with the Frankston Council, and this will be my final comment. Um, and to be honest, they don't know what to do with some of the issues here in the city. I sat with um, one of the councillors and a couple of the, couple of the, the leaders in the, in the council. And honestly, there's all these social issues in the city. I haven't got a clue. They keep trying to bring the police into it. And... It's beyond police's remit or mandate. One of the things they've, they've just put out is they've started a, a smoking ban in the city, which, you know, I don't like smoking, but I, I tell you, it's pretty hard to do that, you know. And the reality is, I, I was in this meeting and I said to the, the guy who was in charge of the police in Franks, and I said, so I'm sure your members are really happy about booking people for smoking. And he rolled his eyes, you know. And that's the reality. It's kind of all these unworkable laws and... And they're trying to get them to... And they think somehow that's going to clean the city up. But I just think that's just stupid, you know. But so there's so many things that are happening in our city that really they have no clue how to fix. But it's the role of the church. We are called to be salt and light in our communities, you know. That's such a big deal. Salt and light. What does salt do? It brings flavour. Salt brings... And, and, and light exposes darkness. And, you know, I believe that's the role of the church. And we have a unique thing in Frankston. God has given us unity. He's given us relationship. He's given us trust. I, 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 I can say that with absolute clarity. The senior leaders of this city have a trust with each other that's so good, so cool. And I, I'm, I'm trading on that today because I believe that God's in that. 
Do I get an amen? Amen. amen? So I'd like to introduce you to Randall Bond. And Randall is a, he's a very good Anglican, but he hasn't got his backward collar on this morning. But Randall's a, a great young man. And I, I've actually met him once previously, but he's the one that introduced me to this, uh, this whole process. So I'm going to invite you up to just to, to take it to the next step. Thanks, Randall. Uh, good morning. Well, I'm going to introduce someone that's going to introduce someone. Uh, I, I'm uh, confident that uh, in the wisdom of God is the answer to some of the issues and problems that we see on the, the streets. And part of God's wisdom is the church. And part of the way he expresses his wisdom is he connects us together. And so the, our speaker this morning actually connected our next introducer, Andrew Satterley and I, together back in 2000. 11, 12, and in 2013, we started up uh, street pastors in the city of Yarra and seeking to reach people that are heading to nightclubs to care, listen, and help them as, as a platform for God to really move and address some of the issues and the challenges there. So I'm going to invite Andrew to come up and introduce uh, the Street Ministries Conference and then our speaker for today. Thanks, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I'm just going to plug the uh, the conference for next week. Um, we um, one of the, one of the most amazing things for us uh, as people going out on the streets really has been that we kind of expected people to throw cabbages at us or something like that that they're going to hate us. But actually, you 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 may or may not be surprised that people are actually really hungry. Uh, there are some people who are you know who who will who will. Uh, you know, throw up issues about church at you, but most people are really interested in God. They're not at all closed. And um, we would, you know, we, we're not out preaching at people, but we actually, would, we're just trying to be authentic Christians on the streets. And so we can often say to people, look, we don't know what to do about your problem, but, you know, would you like us to pray for you? And we've never had anyone turn us down. They've always been hungry for it. And so people have got a hunger for God, but they need us to be out there. Um, so many people now uh, are brought up in, um, in non-Christian homes, they don't go to church, they don't have stuff in school anymore. They actually don't have an idea about God sometimes. Uh, you'd be, you know, we get, you, you know, people genuinely in their 20s have no idea about the significance of the Christian faith. So um, <clears throat> we, um, uh, we've got a conference starting next week, if, uh, we, which has got the, the other thing really, which is amazing, I think, sorry, is that God seems to be raising up uh, across Australia, the same idea. Um, and it's different named groups. Uh, there's, there's, like about, there's about 14 different groups around Australia who are doing the same kind of thing as street pastors. And God seems to be working independently around this big country, raising up people to do the same things in churches. So we're having a conference next week, and we've invited people from all over, uh, and they're all coming. You know, there are people coming from across Australia and from local, in Melbourne. And it's really to get together, to learn from each other, um, to encourage each other, and um, to hopefully sort of spark off uh, this kind of ministry um, here, you know, in other places. So um, we want to try and get more people out on the streets and, and people sharing the gospel out on the streets. So if you're interested, you'll be more than welcome to come. So I have to introduce to you Eustace. Now, um, Eustace is, is, a, is, a, is a pastor in a church in London. He's a reverend. Um, he is the uh, director of uh, Life Builders, which is a, an, a, a men's ministry in the UK. But m more importantly, and more uh, uh, significant for me, is that he's the director of operations for the Evangel so, sorry, the um, Ascension Trust in the UK, which is the parent body of street pastors. Um, Eustace is, uh, and his wife Sharon have been were instrumental in starting street pastors in the UK in <coughs> 2000. Um, and three, and there are now, starting with 18 people, there are now 14,000 street passes across the UK and then across the world. It's growing in, it's going right across the world. And God's really behind it. And so um, I'd like to introduce you to him and Sharon. <laughs> Come on. Sharon's not a, like a second thought, by the way. She's. <laughs> She's probably more exciting to listen to than Eustace. Yes. Um, uh, Thank you. Thank you. And, um, I'll, put the, I'll, I'll put you in their hands. And, um, yeah. 
I always think if you can get the applause before, that's good because you haven't heard a word I'm going to say. It, it, it is a pleasure. Thank you for the invite. Um, God is really good because we landed yesterday and, uh, and he granted me sleep. Yeah. No, no, hold on. Did you hear that? He granted him sleep. sleep in, he, Just did, he, he did. He um, did. Around about 10 o'clock, I, I felt time to go to bed. I thought, thank you, Lord. And as I was closing my eyes, I remember seeing my wife wide awake and, yes. and thinking that. But it, it is a pleasure to be with you. It is. Uh, would it be okay to uh, allow a, a period where you could ask us some questions? Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll talk for a little while and then most of the important stuff you want to know you can ask. Uh, uh, we'll clear that up. Um, my name's Eustace. Um, I'm a really busy person, so people tell me. Um, but one of the most enjoyable things that I do in terms of ministry, it's got to be said, it is um, street passes. I say to people, I have the most, the most interesting, and I probably have the best job in the whole wide world. I, I spend my time uh, dealing and uh, going to different churches, speaking to ministers. Um, it, this is kind of my nine to five kind of thing. And it's always about how can we reconnect with our community? What can we do? Um, that's the, really the positive sides of dealing with ministers. Yeah? And then there's the other side as well. We're not, we're not gonna go into that. Yeah, we're not going to go into that. But God, uh, I love the fact that whenever we start a meeting, um, whether it's a one o'clock meeting or whether it's a uh, evening meeting, I, I used to come out of my meetings and I used to go home to my wife and I used to say to her, this is an excellent job. Yeah, and she used to say to me, why? Well, I said, because we get to pray before every conversation. Yeah, the, now, if you work in the secular world like I did, that was an amazing thing. You got to pray before you started a conversation, and at the end, you pray again. Now, my meeting with people would be about going and say to them about street passes. Street passes, how can we, summar how can we summarize street passes? Easy. Oh, it's the church doing what the church was called to do. Simple. Mark, I'm with you. See, just to let you know, I'm a Pentecostal woman. Yeah. Amen. I make no excuses, right? And we need to be where the people are. It's brilliant being in the house. We come in the house to give God thanks for the week. But if we ain't out feeding those that are hungry, clothing those that are naked, and sitting down with an arm and a shoulder for those that are in need... We are not the full counsel of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Street pastors is an arm. Can I just tell you a story? Would that be, would that be all right? Would that be all right? right? Now, I've been doing this for 16 years. If the roles were reversed and I was sat sitting where you are now, I would be saying, Lord, let the doors open. Let me leave because this is not what I do. I would have been saying that. Les encouraged me to put on, we have stylish uniforms that says street passes and we have baseball caps. And I give God thanks that I listened to a man that had more wisdom than me. I was out one night on the street. When you, no, notice my terminology, when you become a street pastor, not if, we don't do expression, we're doing, yeah? When you become a street pastor, there will be times when you won't want to go out. It'll be cold, wet, and windy, and you'll want to stay indoors. But I'm going to leave you with a story that I hope will encourage you. It was one said night, and I didn't want to go out. But I put on my jacket. I got ready, and I walked the streets of London. We go out at 10 o'clock at night till 4, 5 o'clock in the morning when the people weren't there. And I didn't really want to go out. And I don't say, thus saith the Lord. I don't preach scripture because I'm the walking testimony. I'll tell you what God has done for me. And we're out walking one night. And there's a young man. And he's walking. But his face and his body was not 
aligned with each other. His face was hurting and his body was angry. So I said, good evening. He didn't stop. I said, sir, I said, good evening. Then he stopped. And all of a sudden I heard God say to me, tell him I love him. Yeah, yeah, all right, hold on, let me, let me exchange <laughs> names. Like, you know, wait a minute, I can't just come in straight there, right? Yeah. God says, tell him I love him now. I said to the young man, I don't normally do this, sir, but I've got to tell you this urgently. God says he loves you. I watched this grown man hit the floor like a sack of potatoes. He went straight down and started to cry. Now, ladies, when you watch another female cry, there's, it, it gets you and you want to hug. But when you see a man cry, there's a different level. Because we train them, don't we? Don't cry, not, not manly. Please, when we get rid of that rubbish. And I went down on the floor and I hugged this man. And this man gave me a letter from his pocket. He said, please read it. I took the letter out and it said... Dear God, if you love me and you can forgive me, send someone to tell me you still love me. Because this is a young man of 23 that was in the church, but met a young girl that Brett brought him out of the church. He got into trouble. We spent time in prison. She had a baby that he never saw and he come out and he couldn't get a job. He had no gas, no electricity, no food. And at the bottom of this letter, it says, if I don't hear from you, I will take my life tonight because there's nothing worth living for if I don't hear from you. Now, I could be here all day, all week. We're here for 13 days, and I could keep you 13 days straight with every story that I've told or experienced. But what you need to know is that you are sitting here and someone is praying for you to come and bring the good news of hope and salvation to them. Don't not respond to their repair. Amen. Amen. <laughs> She's left me. <laughs> no, that's okay, sweetheart. But you can drop me anytime you wish. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, street pastors. It started when we got a. Um, I was forwarded a letter uh, from, from Mark. Um, I hadn't met the man, but I got the, the heart of the man in that communication. Um, and I was saying to him this morning when I read the letter, I, I felt his. Water, what hinders thee? Here's the opportunity. What hinders thee? Uh, because the need is there. Uh, you seem to have the most important component um, f to make street passes happen, and that is the cooperation of each other. Yeah, this, trust me, it's, it's not so everywhere. It, it just isn't so. When we started, at Street Passers, it came out from a really just simple place, and it was the desire to go out to care, listen, and to help uh, people. And uh, we kind of, we spent a number of years scoping the idea and, uh, and so forth. But then we came to the place of, it's gonna happen. And I recall going to, uh, door knocking as you were, and I, I, this was, it was a simple idea. We was going to have a conversation with the church and say, look, will you just let us have your ones and twos? You know the people in your congregation that has a heart and a passion for the community. Not that all of us shouldn't, but you know what I mean. Um, and if, you put, if we can pull them together, we would love to go out there um, between the hours of 10 o'clock at night to 4 in the morning. You can imagine how that went down initially, right? <laughs> Uh, and um, we, we, we just got, and that is because, um, unbeknownst to us, uh, when we were having a conversation with the police later on, those were the hours. Apparently, stuff happened. P 
people got hurt, the vulnerable were exposed. And so God was doing a thing. And we started to have that conversation uh, with the church. And uh, after a while, we had a, um, a day such as this. That it was going to happen. The media were invited. All the churches were invited in a Baptist church in Brixton. And there were wall-to-wall ministers. It was excellent. You know when you get encouraged and you think, yeah, Lord, you're going to do something here. Wall-to-wall people. And, and again, with the message was, let us have your ones and your twos. And we can pull together. And this is the key thing. We don't want it to be a, a Baptist thing. We don't want it to be a Methodist thing. We don't want it to be a Pentecostal thing. We want it to be the church. Yeah, the, can we do that? And that is one of the things. One of the criteria, if you like, for street pastors is that if any area, and we had the same conversation uh, with the guys in um, Yara, if any area says, we would love to do the street pastor model, will you come, let's get this stuff going. First thing we say is that you must have at least four churches from different denominations. Uh, we have had expressions from big churches who say, we want to do it on our own and they've gone and done something else. There's something wrong about a church that doesn't want to play with others. Yeah, especially other Christians. Yeah, um, there's something wrong there. We had this excellent day, and I left there really encouraged. I thought, yes, Lord. We had something like this. Yeah, we, I thought, yes, Lord, it's gonna happen, because we had over 70, 80 churches in, in, the, in the gathering. Some weeks later, we had our very first training uh, in on Angel Town, a notorious estate in Brixton, and 18 people turned up. 15 were women. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am constantly reminded of that. Uh, uh, 15 of them were women, and it was an amazing thing, because I spent the, the longest period of time saying to God, how is that? Yeah, because what happens, of course, is, you know, the, the call comes out and it's, let's go out. And there is a story and why we got where we are. And I'll share that uh, during the week. But the women kind of responded. Um, and some of them were the seniors. Yeah. I, I later found out that the senior, give, if I was going to go out, can I speak prophetically? Um... When you go out, were I to go out with you, I would find the most senior mother in the team. Because she, on that Friday, Saturday night, is my secret weapon. Oh, you don't understand. You put, you put a granny here. Yeah, you're not, you've, you've not just brought a granny onto the street. You've brought all that life experience onto the street. You're going to bridge the cap. Those young men and those young women, they just want to protect this granny. It's an amazing thing. And so we have, if you like, this section of the church. Sometimes we're sitting down because they think, you know what, it's time for the next generation. No, 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 there is stuff to happen. It is an amazing thing. I have seen grannies. It is Friday night. We are in Brixton. And I've got a politician uh, who is it's a national politician. He wants to go out and see what the church is doing. So I've invited him over. And he's with us. And he, they, they kind of say, we'll come out with a, for an hour with you. Inevitably, three hours later, they're still with us because they just are amazing at what God is doing or how these normal people are able to engage with people that they think that are untouchable. It, it, it is, it, some, we're walking there and there's this, there's this group of young people in the distance and you can see the body language, something's gonna go down. You know it. Um, so I'm across the road here and uh, one of the street passes, she, she takes, she's a, a nan type yeah, she loves people. That's her thing. She just loves people. So she, she moves over to the midst of them. And uh, when, when the politician sees this, she kind of goes to this person. And then there's all this ruffling going, and she does this. And he does this. Thank you. Um, 
And as he sees this in the midst of what was going to be a possible conflict, he says to me, my gosh, Eustace, that's brave. And I said to him, no, Frank, if I had done it, it would have been brave. But what he failed to see was the body language of this, because what she did, she looked for the tallest one in the group, figured that he was a t leader, and she went in and she did that. And when he turned round, his whole body language did that. <laughs> he saw Nan. He saw Nan, and that diffused the whole situation. And I knew, having gone out with her many times, I knew what she was doing. She had pulled him over and she was giving him that Nan talk, you know. She was giving him, you're so much better than this son talk. You know, the, the thing that Pastor had said, she was now saying that to him on the streets of Brixton. The kind of thing that mum had told him. She was, and it's amazing, don't you find children? You tell, I say to my daughter, you are excellent. I say to my daughter, I believe that anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. I've told her this from the time, yeah, she's like, you get a stranger that has that set, and she, it's a revelation apparently. <laughs> And it's not unsimilar. We are out there at 2 o'clock in the morning. The last thing they expect is to meet you and I. At 11 o'clock on a rainy evening, the last thing they expect is you and I. We trained 18 people. And then we went out for the first night. I kind of had a, a conversation with God. Because... If I was planning it, and I was going to take a group of people down to Brixton, you guys are familiar with Brixton, Lambeth? It has a bit of a reputation. Some it deserves, some it really doesn't. Uh, uh, my plan would be, God, could we make it 15 men and maybe three women? That's because I'm, I'm thinking safety. Uh, uh, that's uh, what's it say. But he had a greater plan. We're, we're, we're walking... And I'm a little bit apprehensive, because we're going out 10 o'clock at night, and the media had caught hold of this whole Christian people are going out where people are raving and the nighttime economy, and they had asked them, and some had said that, you know, why would Christians want to come out on a Friday night to spoil our fun? I thought, wow, out of all of the things that we could be seen as or to, we were going to be people who were going to be spoiling other people's fun. And I tell you, I have been, I've had the privilege, we've had the privilege of going out on many a first nights. Many a first nights. And I love it whenever we do that. Because I stand up with a level of confidence that uh, people think, well, surely useless. And the only reason is, I can say that when you go out as a street passer, your community are going to embrace you. You're going to say to me, how do you know that? Because I've seen it time and time and time again. And God, the God of Yara, the God of Brixton, is the same God of Thailand. It's the same, it's the same God. What he has done here, he will and can do. Uh, we went out for that first night. It was a remarkable night. We were walking down, and people were giving us the high fives. Police, we have a relationship with the police, but it's a distance one. We believe that we have to work together um, in terms of the police and local authorities and the church, the church being uh, the 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 main partner in this whole thing. So they were kind of bipping us because they knew we was going out and we told them that we were going out and they were concerned about us because they thought we're going to get killed out there, yeah. pretty much. But people were giving us the high fives. I had strangers coming, hugging me. And you're looking at me and you think, don't everybody do that, Eustace? Yeah. <laughs> And they were hugging me purely because I was a Christian. Because I said it. I had it. I had street pastors. They knew we were the church. And these are the questions that we got asked. And these are the questions that was asked in Yara. And these are the questions that's been asked in Scotland. These are the questions that's been asked in Jamaica. These are the questions that's been asked in America when street pastors go out. 
is, who are you, what are you doing? And the, the answer to the you, who are you, is the most perfect answer. Because the answer is, we are the church. Now, and they want to know which church, and here's the beautiful prayer, yeah, we are all the denomination. Yeah? And some people, are, they're really excited about that, and I think that's to our shame, that when they hear that the church is actually one, they get excited about the whole thing. And the second question we are asked is, is this an event? Very important. Um, a good friend of mine, Les, um, says this. He says the church takes a year to plan an event. Takes a day to execute that event. And take another three years to pray about whether we should have the event again. Because we're event driven. We do a thing, whether it's a conference, whether it's a church service, we're event driven. And the people out there kind of know it. But to, and our response to that was, we will be out here every weekend. We will be out here, whether it's raining, whether it's sunny, whether it's snowing. We will be out there. And it's really important that we are seen. And not, not only will we be out there, we will be visible. So when you see this street pastor uniform, and I do apologize. Um, had I knew you had this fantastic setup, I would have brought a, a, yeah, a PowerPoint or something for you. But the uniform is a blue uniform and it has street pastors. Yeah, it's it, oh, it's on there. Okay. Um, and it pretty much says this. Here I am. I am the church. Let's have a conversation. Here I am. I am the church. Ignore me if you want. We don't push it down anybody's face. But the, the powerful thing about street pastors is that we do not parachute street passes into any area, it is the churches in that area, it is yours. Uh, it, so it's, it's the, the people you're going to meet on a Friday and Saturday night. Be prepared to bounce into them in Audis. It doesn't stop just on that. And they're, they're going to see you in that. And I was sharing with Mark, the wonderful thing, uh, especially in the early days, was that we would go out and we would do the training and after we'd done the training, people would go out. And on Tuesday, on Thursday, during the week, I would get phone calls. And it would be people that are street pastors who are on their way to work. But they stopped because they spoke to that homeless guy that they usually used to walk past. And they've got his details. So it didn't stop there. It wasn't something that we did, but it was an expression of who we are. And that, that's really important. God is an amazing God. I would love to s stand here and go, you know what? Les, the team, Sharon and I and all the others, we take credit. We, honestly, we can't. Yeah. For the very first five years, maybe to a degree even now, what our prayer has been, God, can you slow this down, please? Because it just took off. We had a very simple desire. And it was, let us go out to care, listen, and to help. And the rest, God did. The rest, the, the fact that we were now getting expressions of interest from parts of the UK that I've only ever seen on a motorway. And pl places around the world, like Australia. How else would I ever get here? Or to receive a letter from somebody in America that says they were reading a book from the R.T. Wright and Anglican theologian. And in there, he wrote a simple sentence about the expression of the church on the, on the streets. And he said, I was in Glasgow and came across this group of people and he gave a briefest of description of street pastors. That caused an Englishman in Chico, California to send me an email 
for us to have a conversation, for me to be on the plane three months later for us to start Street Pastors in Chico, California. And you can imagine my surprise when some, a year later, I'm in Bangor, Maine, and they say, we read a book from R.T. Wright, which had a sentence, and it happened. I, I recently, I've heard this, you know, when people talk about the perfect storm. Kind of, this feels a little bit like the perfect storm. Yeah? God is ready to do something. And my desire um, really is, yeah, do it. If God is, whenever uh, he's ready to do something, he has this unique ability that he, he, he raises up a man or a woman. Yeah, just to stir stuff a little. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let, 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 let's do that. Um, street parts, we take the training really, really seriously. Uh, initially, the training was for 12 days of training. Um, it, it's, we, we've, we've changed it slightly now, so, uh, so it's about 50 hours of, of training. It's, it's not academic training, it's really practical training. Training that will equip individuals um, to feel a little bit more confident. It covers such thing as the good news, really important, knowing your community, drug awareness, rosal responsibility, youth, all of those key um, subject matters. And of course, if there's something unique to your area, um, I, I, my thing is that you can't have too much training. But training is, in the time that we've been going out, 16 years of street passes, I can, for the very first 10 years, if you ask me how many incidents that we had, I would have said to you, none. None. And that is because of prayer and I believe the training. Just to let you know, don't sit there think that you have to be Bible scholars to do this. Because trust me, you do not. All you need is a relationship with Jesus Christ and the, the ability to actually say, hi, how you doing? That is it. We don't carry tracks. We are the track. We don't do anything like that. It is just the ability to come alongside someone and see how they are. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. It helps if you know a little, but you don't have to know a lot. Any other questions? What's the follow-through like with the people that you meet on the street? What's the follow-through? You do, you, there's a, there's a uh, structure in it that you'll have a coordinator and a senior. So if someone says to you they want to get off of drugs, like they, the young man that I met, he wanted to get a back out. We send that information to the coordinator. The coordinator then will meet with that individual and they walk the road until they're ready and where they need to be. So there is follow through. It's not just, I'm here, here, here I am, bye bye. No, we will walk and we will meet the need to the best of our ability of the individual. You will refer, um, because you know what the service is in your locality. You meet that individual, it may not be for the church, maybe it's something that the local authority does, we're able to refer them to the point of help. The coordinator would do that, that wouldn't be you, because of practical reasons and safeguarding reasons, you're, you have a mobile number that's a generic for the coordinator, that is the number that goes out, because we have to be wise, you don't know who you're going to meet, so we don't want no incidents, but there wouldn't be nothing stopping you meeting with the coordinator, but it wouldn't be one meeting on one on one, so it would be the coordinator or the senior team it, member it, that would do that. And it's amazing, because um, remember if you're out at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're having a conversation with Joe. And Joe says, yeah, I would need some help. And Joe says, it's whatever it is, if it's drugs, we're gonna see if we can help you. If it is homelessness, we're gonna see if we can help you. Actually, if it's a faith thing, I'm your geezer. Yeah, I, I, I'm the person for that. Um, whilst the coordinator will be given the details, you would th take they've it. kind of connected with you. The, and if they're going to go to a church, it's, they want to go to the church that would let somebody like you out yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning, because that's, that's, that's where they met you. Yeah. 
But if you want to find out more, come to the conference as well. Have there ever been any uncomfortable incidents that you had to face in China, not even face in China? There's, I've had a couple. Oh yeah, we was out one night at Jazz Cafe, there's a big Jazz Cafe and there's prolific drug dealing that goes on. And me and my counterpart, Sharon, the two Sharons are out and we're out there and we're ministering and we know there's something going on. Then all of a sudden I see this geezer go like this. And I thought, okay, fun and games is going to happen here, let's get ready. And he belted very quickly and knocked my uh, friend's cap right off. Within seconds, I kid you not, I have four Rasta guys locked up out of their heads. Got this man off his feet, up the wall, and he said, Mom, you want me to deal with him? I said, no, put him down, please, I beg you, put him down. Um, you, you become, it's, really, it's hard to explain how the people on the street become your protectors. It really happens very, very fast. You know, I've, I've had stuff where people turn around and say, don't touch them. They're women of God. You don't touch them. And these are hard. Some of these are hard fast. I've stood in front of guys where it says where they're, they're holding. You can see the gamba or the, the um, bora. Do you have boras? Yeah. Um, it's like a screwdriver and it's sharpened up and they use it as a knife. Yeah. So I've stood in front of that. But there's a, still a level of respect for church. It can't be said loud enough. We have an immense amount of credibility out there. We yeah. have, there is, whether they've ever walked through yours or my church, there are loads of people out there that see they're connected either through nan, mom, auntie, aunt. Somehow they're, they're, they are connected. And there's a, there is a load of respect. I just think, you know what? We just need to be out there and claim, reclaim that. That, 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 that's ours. If I had a penny or a dollar for every time someone has said to me, about time the effing church is out in the street mm -hmm. doing what the effing church should do, I would have my own plane. <laughs> because it, it's really strange that you have non-Christians. I mean, I've had so many people, don't always agree with your theology, but I love how you love on people. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. Um, just, uh, just by way of introduction, the conference next week, I think it goes Tuesday to, is it Tuesday to Thursday, it's in the city, it's at Scott's Church in the city, if you'd like to come to one, and, one or all of the sessions, it's not very expensive, I'm actually going to that, I just feel like it needs, to, we need to be connecting to that and what an honour to have these two with us today. Um, now, we've actually filmed this, and so we're going to make it available on our website. I'll send that around to everyone if you'd like to do that. We're going to take an offering up. Now, as you leave today, there's a couple of things. There's a bucket out there, there's an FPOS machine out there, and this form out there. Now, I know it says expression of interest. I get Sharon's perspective. <laughs> but at the moment, it's still an expression, and... and We'd love you to, you know, say, hey, you know, we're in. We'd just love to be a part of that. And I know there's a number of folk here that are, are kind, of, kind of not senior leaders, but you've been invited by your leaders. But, you know, I think it's such an important thing. The church becomes who she's called to be in any community. And, and Frankston, guys, has such a unique disposition. You know, you guys all come from this region. And um, I just want to honour what you already do. You know, I just want to back up what these guys said about respect. You know, we've run a street cafe for many years in the city and it's incredible when people used to cause trouble in our cafe, big group of these people would rise up, wouldn't they, Wendy, and they'd, they'd say, hey, this is our space. Yeah. You, you stop that now, you know, because they honour what we were doing, you know. And um, I walk around the city today and so many people know me and they call me Pastor Mark. It's so funny because they don't go to church, you know. They, they're people, street people, but they know who I am and they know what I do. And, and so to them, that's a value. They value that. They hold that dear. And, and so I I'm, I'm, I'm kind of want to replicate that. I want that to become the, the light and salt in our community. And I absolutely believe that the council 
or get on board with this. I'm, I'm planning on approaching them. I actually, Tim Costello is now part of our city, as you know, and um, I actually have written a paper about this. Gave it to Tim last week, and Tim was the mayor of St Kilda for a couple of years, you know, and so he's got a bit of a couple of hats, and he actually he gave me some instruction. He walked me through what he'd do as a mayor, and so I've really I've taken that on board, and, and so we're going to try and get the police involved. We've already got a relationship with the police. Police love what we do already, but I'm sure they're going to love this if we go this route. So I absolutely believe that once the church starts to become this voice in the community, it's going to really have honour. So I'd like to really thank these guys. I mean, how, how'd you like to fly all the way? What is it? How many hours? 24? 24 hours. And then have how many? Five hours sleep, maybe? Not even... Three hours sleep. So they did pretty well, didn't they? So let's... I, I, I thought I'd... Um, Maybe, um, Peter, would you, would you mind coming up and praying for these guys? Would you do that for us? Peter's really one of the fathers in the city here. Him and I are the old guys now. Great. It's a great honour. It's, it's been wonderful hearing you both. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this ministry. Uh, God is going to be starting uh, nameless ministries, you know, where faceless, nameless, just the anointing on people are going to just arise because the passion to go out and the passion to go out and reach out as Isaiah 58 is very clear on. We thank you for this beautiful couple, Lord God. We pray, Father God, for success for them in a way where hearts would be touched, hearts would be drawn uh, to not just stay in the four walls but getting out of the four walls. And Father, that they'd be able to recruit people to go on to the streets Lord God. Father God it's just right there for us Lord God Father we thank you for their hearts we thank you for this conference we thank you for our city Melbourne we bring before you and all our suburbs Lord God all the churches Lord God we so hunger for unity we so hunger that we'd all become one Lord God and work together Lord God all these different graces would be mixed in together and working together that the city of Melbourne would see an incredible great church rise up Lord God and Frankston our community here Lord God we so long for this Lord God that we would be in so many different areas we pray for this area of the streets the connecting with those homeless people disconnected people hurting people Father God we pray Father God that you would open up the heavens over this today that you would uh, your kingdom would come here on earth as it is in heaven that what we've heard would resonate in us that we'd gather together and we'd stand together in this we pray in Jesus precious name amen, amen. awesome